Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 16th episode of your new favorite internet show, VisionCon Live. I'm your host, Zach Wilson, but you didn't come here to see me today. You came to see the man of the hour. Versus Shikamaru Nara from Naruto, Naruto Shippuden, Boruto, a ton of other properties in the franchise, as well as many other characters. The man who is impossible not to admire and revere. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the one, the only, Tom Gibbis. Tom, how you doing oh, today? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to be here. Excellent, excellent. I was telling you earlier before we started recording that you know when I started this show, you know, obviously I've been a huge fan of everyone we've had on the air. You know, I don't like being disingenuous. I only reach out to people that I'm genuine fans of. So, but you know, I'm a fan of a lot of people. So when the show first started, you know, shot my shot at all of them. With that <laughs> said, there were a few that I definitely knew going in, I wanted to try and get on the show. And you were one of them. Yeah. Now with that said, uh, it was, I could not for the life of me find you until recently where Miley Flanagan, Naruto herself, uh, did an Instagram live with you that I watched and highly enjoyed. And I was like, All I right. sort of invaded that, by the way. Definitely. Definitely. She, didn't, she didn't set that up. I just jumped in and then she was like, okay. <laughs> and we both were trying to figure out how do you get you to go live? And then that was, <laughs> it worked out really great. And actually we had a lot of fun. So Miley said, if we do this again, we're doing them together and you know, sure. we can Anyway, I'll let you continue. <laughs> well, no, and it was obviously, watching that whole thing, it really warmed my heart just seeing the fact that, you know, I mean, you guys are, I mean, going out throughout the Naruto franchise, you know, Naruto and Shikamaru get closer and closer, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but, you know, and then, of course, Boruto, I mean, you guys are thick as thieves, you know, working yeah. close together and like that, so it was very heartwarming to see that you yourselves outside of the show, I mean, almost a seamless transition. I mean, obviously, you guys aren't, you know, ninjas with supernatural powers, <laughs> but, you know. You know, if anything, you're more impressive well, by being... Uh, I've known Miley for years. Like, um, I want to say 30-some years. Like, early 90s in Minnesota, well, we were in part of an improv group together. So, it's funny that we were in Minneapolis at the same time. We were doing some improv called a place called the Brave New Workshop in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And then moved out to California at different times. And then we end up sort of working on the same project. It's, it's very strange, right? Like... It's, you well, would think we'd go her way, I'd go my way, and we'd never run into each other again. And then we end up on the same show. So that's kind of, uh, kind of fun. That is insane. I mean, it's definitely a small world. But, you know, kind of talking on that, you know, I do want to lead us up to there. But before we get there, kind of how did we get here, Tom? I mean, was this always the dream growing up that you wanted to be, a, you know, a very accomplished voice actor and, you know, just entertainer in general? Or was that something you kind of decided later in life? Well, voice acting sort of came later. My, my big goal was to be just an actor, which I, I think any, if you ask any voice actor, there's very few that would just say, no, I'm just a voice actor. Oh, they, sure. they all, you, you come out to LA to, to try and do it, you know? And I, um, I went to school for theater. I uh, went to Mankato, which is Minnesota State uh, Mankato <laughs> now. Yeah. They changed the name. And um, I did uh, an internship at the Children's Theater of Minneapolis. I worked at the Guthrie Theater, which is a very prestigious regional theater in Minneapolis. I did a national tour of a show. I did, I did regional theater and summer stock, and I did commercials, and I did, you know, you name it, I did it. Murder mysteries and all sorts of stuff. Improv, lots of, lot of, lot of nightclub work, a lot of improv stuff, and a lot of comedy. And then at a certain point, I just said, you know, go out to L.A. and try to make it there. And then... I say yes to everything. You kind of want to embrace all of it. And there was an opportunity. I met somebody, Jeff Nimoy is his name. You might know that name. He worked on Digimon. He's very big in the, does a lot of cons and stuff. And Jeff was a friend, a mutual friend of mine. And I saw him at a party and he said, oh yeah, I'm working on Digimon. And you know, I said, you know, I've always wanted to do cartoons. I always wanted to do animation. I think I got kind of an interesting voice. You know, what does it take? And he goes, well, have you ever done it before? And I go, no. And he goes, yeah, sorry, I can't help you. So, <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of blew me off. And um, so I, every time I saw him, I'd kind of bug him. And I'd be like, you know, come on, just give me a little part or let me, let me do something. Let me audition, please. Just let me audition, you know? And so finally he did Digimon the movie. And uh, he's called in a bunch of our actor friends who are kind of in the same group. 
And I knew they had never done animation before. So I called Jeff up and I said, uh, hey, what, you know, what the hell? You're calling in these guys sure. and they don't, they, they don't have experience in doing ADR work or anything. And he goes, fine. <laughs> and so I went down there and I did my audition and for Digimon the movie and Jeff was there, he was the director. And then there were a bunch of producers in the room. And of course they said, um, that's great, Tom. Um, have you ever done ADR work? And I, yeah. and I said, no, I have not. I like to, I think I'm a fast learner. Um, but I have not. And so they said, well, we can't give you this part in the movie, even though we love your voice, but here's what we're going to do is we're going to put you in a couple episodes of Digimon and we're going to try you out. And if you get up to speed and you kind of learn the ropes and back then it was a lot more technical and you had to like the flaps, you had to make the flaps fit as the actor today. The, <clears throat> today they use a program called, um, Oh, I can't. Anyway, they can slide it. They can slide it in. They can speed it up or slow it down. They can make it fit. So the engineer does work, but before, you had to be, as the actor, you had to make it fit in the spot. And um, you could do the same line a hundred times until it met the sink. And uh, Pro Tools, sorry. So Pro Tools now, they can just take it. If you're close, they can just slide it in there and make it work. But back then, boy, you had to hit it. And um, they don't have time to spend five hours to record 10 lines, right? So they want you to, I think at the time, 30 loops of 30 loops an hour was considered good. If you could get to 30 loops an hour, you were fine, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so I went in and I kind of learned Jeff, Jeff was sort of mentoring me and we did a couple of Digimon episodes and then this opportunity to be on the show called Shinzo, which is around, I think it was around 2000, uh, 2001 maybe. Yeah. And um, they said, okay, we're going to cast you as the lead in this show. And we're, we're going to give you three episodes. And if you're not up to speed in three episodes, we'll Ooh. get somebody else. So I just started going to work. And I worked with a director by the name of Michael Sorich, uh, who's a great guy, very funny guy. And he basically got me up to speed. You know, and he, he, he really kind of worked with me. And, and uh, you know, episode four came, and then episode five, and then episode six. And I was like, I guess. I guess they're not going to fire me. <laughs> I think I got the. I guess I, I nailed it. And so, anyway, completed that whole series and then just started. And it was basically from jobs that I did, somebody knew they would recommend me for this. And then you go and you just start picking up little parts here and there. And I think at one time, the most I ever did was I had like four different ongoing series going at the same time. But, uh, now it's like the only thing I have going is Boruto, but, uh, and then you might get, I audition for stuff, but it's not, it's, you kind of come in and out and it depends on when they need you and, sure. you know, so, um, I mean, but yeah, so then the rest of it, you can look on IMDB and see all the shows. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, to be fair, if there were ever a show that you could hang your hat on, I mean, you could, you could do far worse than oh, yeah. the Naruto franchise. I had been doing a lot of these weird little, like, it's called, um, they're not weird, but um, sort of niche uh, yeah. anime stuff like uh, Honey and Clover, which is a drama about kids in a private school. And <laughs> you know, I did like a couple of those. Yeah. And uh, Prince of Tennis, um, Bo um, oh, I, Busu Rankin, things like that. And they were all these kind of weird little, very kind of niche shows, very small. And then Naruto came along, they were auditioning for Naruto. I had no, I thought it was just another one of those kind of shows, just a little tiny show. Mm -hmm. And then like everyone in town had been um, uh, called in to audition. And, and so I got to audition and, and there were probably 20 people in the room and that never happens because when you're doing voiceover stuff, this is back in the day when you'd actually go into audition. Sure. Um, You'd see two people, one guy coming in, you're going out and you don't know what it was for or what you were doing. You, do, you lay down your tracks and then, okay, we'll call you if we're interested. And then you didn't hear anything and, or you did. And then you were, you're on the show. But, uh, and this one was huge. Uh, there was a lot of people auditioning. And so I auditioned for three roles. I auditioned for Naruto, Choji and Shikamaru. And uh, I got Shikamaru. And then 
they, they called me and said, you have Shikamaru. And I was like, great. And I don't know what that means. Or <laughs> they go, uh, yeah, so we'll call you when he's got some stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it was like three months. Because if you think about those early episodes, uh, it's a lot, it's real heavy on the uh, Sasuke, Naruto, Sakura, and working with Kakatsuki. Uh, uh, now I'm in like episode three, but they wait until we get enough to bring me in for a session. So it wasn't probably till episode 10 or 11 or 12 that I went in and then recorded episode three, four, five. And those were like, I'd have one line where I'd be like, whatever, you know? <laughs> it's like, sure. and he was younger and he was like, um, I remember the, my initial take on it was kind of like surfer dude. Mm-hmm. So he had kind of more of like a, yeah, whatever. Okay. Naruto's such an idiot, you know? Yes. And now as he's gotten older, it turns, it goes down more because he's growing up and now it's more like, whatever, what a drag. And it's just right here. Sure. You know? So, yeah. um, now but those think- early days, if you listen to those early episodes and if you think California surfer dude, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Well, I'm originally from San Diego, California, so it, that, that'll be fairly easy for me to do. But uh, two things I wanted to touch on real quick before we continue. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't watched it, Prince of Tennis, very underrated anime. Go watch it. It's really good. Yeah, it's fun. Um, but uh, and number two, yeah, I guess when you, now that I'm thinking about it, I mean, I guess Shikamaru, except for a little here and there, uh, the first big, I don't know, kind of couple episodes of Shikamaru, uh, towards the beginning of Naruto, was kind of the flashback with uh, Choji, him, and Naruto kind of getting into the shenanigans with uh, Aruka sensei Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But is that yeah. kind of... I think that's where, right. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that kind of where... Uh, but, you know, there? what's funny about that is we went back in time for that. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. in the beginning, all I did was, I don't know if you remember, they'd have a test and he'd have his head on a desk. Yeah. <laughs> sleeping. And I, and I would just pipe up to, like, do wise-ass comments from the back of the room. And then we didn't realize how that relationship was growing until later when they brought it back so we could see it. But if you think of it in the actual timeline of it all, I was just a kid on the side that was, you know, lobbing comments from the back, you know, the peanut gallery. That was basically his role in those early days. And, you know, uh, it wasn't until later when they got to explore team 10 on our own. And um, I think it really came in the tuning exams is when it really, by that time we had, arrived at Shikamaru is a solid part of the show. (laughs) I mean, now going into Boruto, I mean, I would argue, I mean, you're essentially, I mean, I think actually Shikamaru becomes like a main character much earlier than Boruto, Um, probably, you know, in Shippuden even. Um, But, you know, with Boruto, I mean, you have almost just as much screen time as Naruto himself. So did you ever imagine, right. you know, kind of starting out as Shikamaru, that Shikamaru would develop and kind of evolve into this character that essentially is just as big of the show as, you know, the character who's the show's named after? Well, except this show is now named Boruto. So we're well, on the back burner again. Sure. But So we're at the beginning of the episodes and the end of the episodes, and the kids just do all the fighting and fair. all the action. But, but it's very much the same way that, you know, the Hokage was in, in the early episodes. The, is it the fifth Hokage? Five? Uh, um, and, then, yeah. and then the, like, uh, Kakashi, you know, right? So we're kind of as, th- that would be the sort of relative, Transition. you know, parallel, right? Yes. To Boruto, to the original Naruto. Sure. Uh, where we were all little kids. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then I lost, what was your question? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so did you, did you ever? Oh, that it would be, to, no, I didn't know it was going to last more than 30, nobody did, right? We just knew that they kept putting out books. So we were like, okay, well, I guess that's job security. And then you cut to 15 years later, 750 episodes. Oh, we're wrapping up Naruto. And everyone was like, oh, it's end of an era. And they go, oh, by the way, are you available Tuesday to come in and record a Boruto script? <laughs> and Miley and I just keep rolling. <laughs> you know, uh, there's, they have little guest appearances by the other, some of the other characters. But I think Miley and I are, I'm not going to say in every episode, but we're heavily oh, in the new series. Because we're the ones, they're the boss now. We say, do this mission. And then they come back and report to us. And we decide what's happening in the village. And then uh, Naruto being sort of the anchor, Boruto's father, that relationship, you know, I'm his advisor. 
So uh, we're an important part of the show. Whereas like you might bring in a, uh, another character that might come in for an episode arc or a couple of arcs, but sure. they're not really, yeah. not like they were in the last show, you know? Yeah, yeah, not nearly as much screen time. But so it know. was a surprise to me. It was, it was all a surprise. <laughs> I'm like, great. And now there's a, um, the books are coming out with a Shikamaru storyline. So who knows if that gets animated, this thing could just keep rolling and rolling and rolling and I'm all till, for it. <laughs> till the end of time. But yeah. so Shikamaru, I mean, you voiced ever since the beginning. And so he, yeah. his voice has taken, as you put it, you know, a lot of different, you know, changes and evolving. Now, is that easy to do or does that take time to kind of, you know, wrap your head around like what he should sound like with each age? Because, you know, we see all of these characters and, you know, pre-adolescent to adolescent yeah. to preteen, teenager, and now adults. And, you know, with you, I mean, it's just right. kind of a seamless, like it sounds genuine, like a, a person that we grew up with listening to. But I mean, I got to think, you know, behind the booth, because, mm -hmm. and I believe Kyle Abair said it best, and it's something that's always stuck with me um, ever since the show started, voice acting, well, acting's in the title. So it is very much voice acting and acting are essentially the same thing in essence. You know, you have yes. to be good at yeah. acting to do yes, I agree. I agree. So, you know, so that is definitely a, uh, you know, a achievement or a, um, a compliment to your skills because, you know, just growing up with this show, for me personally, you know, I kind of felt like I grew up with these characters. You know? Well, and so did I, playing. Yeah. I feel like I grew up with Shikamaru. Mm -hmm. And, <clears throat> you know, I thought, we did definitely have discussions with Mary Elizabeth is the director uh, of a lot of the episodes, um, a lot of the Shapudin episodes for sure. But we definitely had a discussion um, when it came to go from Naruto to Naruto, Naruto Shapudin. It was like three years have passed. And I remember those first few episodes uh, because you get so used to doing it one way mm -hmm. and then they, they would constantly be going, Oh, we got to go back. It's lower, lower, drop it, you know, slow it down you know, and, and making those adjustments. So those first few episodes of uh, Naruto Shippuden were a little, that's where you're kind of feeling the growing pains a little bit and, you know, sort of uh, making the adjustment. And then from there, I would say from there to Boruto was actually an easy because I was, the more we went through Shippuden, the more serious and dramatic uh, Sh Shikamaru got. Mm -hmm. So, his storyline was dramatic. He dealt with death. We've had a lot of major losses, all sorts of things going along the way. By the time we get to Boruto then, you know, he's a full on man. And, and, and that, so that was an easier transition to do. And he's sort of in charge. So everything is, you know, explaining what we're doing, the <laughs> explaining the mission, explaining what Naruto has to do or what Boruto has to do. Sure. And, uh, the, you know, I'm, I'm exposition for the most part. Well, you brought up a good thing that I want to kind of touch on was, you know, Shikamaru definitely did experience anguish plenty of times, you know, and also slight spoiler for Naruto, everybody either watching live here on Facebook or later on YouTube, but you know, enough time has passed. So if you don't want anything spoiled, maybe skip five minutes if you're watching this later on you YouTube. You know what though? People read the books and then That's they watch fair. the show. I don't think there's any real spoilers because they're so familiar with, the entire canon of work that that this is you know some people just love to read the books so that's you fair. already know the story you that's, know that's so, very fair but yeah. what the certain scene that i was referring to is in chaputin you know asuma dies which yes. already had me on you know yes in the feels and you know anybody who knows me knows you know doesn't take a lot to make me cry but <laughs> what i will say is the tipping point was when Asuma is literally dying in your arms, and then later uh, Shikamaru's dad, Shikaku, um, you know, has that conversation, and then you give that heart-wrenching performance of, you know, finally breaking and then just bawling. I mean, I was bawling right there with you, yeah. Tom. So I did want to ask, I mean, that was a very convincing performance, and, you know, I mean, it, it's one thing if you do, if it's, if you do this voice well in kind of just kind of a normal register, kind of talking like you and I are talking right now, yeah, right. but in order to do that voice while also just portraying complete anguish, I mean, does that take practice? Is that just something like you have to inherently be good at? But or well, I think that comes with the acting, right? The, the acting part of voice actor sure. is that you're not just doing a voice, you're playing a character. 
And you, each of us that's on that show has been with this character for characters for so long. They're each individual characters that you start to be able to know you I mean, I guess I'm the Shikamaru expert, right? Because it's like, I've, I've been with him all those steps of the way. I know his storylines. I know, you know, what, where he's gone, what he's done. Um, <clears throat> the interesting thing about voice acting is that we don't get the scripts ahead of time, right? So what we, we, we are experiencing it when it's, when you're laying down the, the recordings, you're experiencing it in real time. So I didn't know Asuma was dead or was going to die. I just knew we were in a bad situation and it was getting worse and it was getting worse. And I'm like, this is not, what, what is happening? And I, you start to really feel for what your character's going through and how he feels about Asuma and the whole thing. And I'm just like, is this, are they killing off a character here? You know, And, and it's, it's very painful because we do it one line at a time. So you're like, what the heck is going on, you know? And you're trying to figure it out as it's happening. And you can kind of read ahead a little bit and you're like, oh no, oh no. Oh, no. And, and then it just happens. And I remember those sessions, um, Mary Elizabeth was great. She, she directed those, but it was like, she, she was just like, that was awesome. You know, she was, that we stayed in it. We just kept plowing through. We didn't take any breaks. We just kept going. And then we thought if there was something wrong, we'll go back and we'll get it. But, and, and it was great. We had, we were, you, once you're in that zone and you know, I, you kind of think, <clears throat> think like uh, Shikamaro, then you you can kind of just play it out and just feel the way you want to feel because it's really happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I've noticed uh, working on uh, Bar Boruto right now, is I'll go into the session and I'm like, hi, everybody, what's going on? Okay, great. All right, here we go. <clears throat> you know, and I, uh, I'd be like, so Naruto, we need to blah, blah, blah. And we start, and I start doing the voice. And then I'll go, do you guys want to take a five minute break or we're going to just, we, we can do that loop. We can do that loop again. If you think, I felt like I took a breath in the middle of that phrasing so we could maybe try. And by the end of the session, I'm just literally talking in his voice. I just, <laughs> it, I, and I'm just like, I'm way down here and everything's gravel in the back of the throat. And it's just, and I can just have a conversation, you right. know? So it's very, it's kind of weird. I don't know if it's weird for the engineer and the director, <laughs> but sure. it's like, it's like, just stay in the voice, right? Because also I think it takes you out of it a little bit, like to be like uh, cracking jokes or something in the booth and, and sort of using your normal voice. And hey, did you guys see the new uh, Star Wars movie? Or, you know, <laughs> whatever, whatever's going sure. on, you know, while you're- sure to set up so i just i just find it sort of a natural thing that right. uh, I end up kind of doing that oh, that's out. hilarious do you ever find yourself kind of just you know sometimes when you're just around the house just kind of busting out one of your voices every now and again just kind of yeah. just for fun yeah i you know i guess it it's part of my natural voice anyway and so i kind of i do a little bit but you can just tell from talking to me that my voice is high <laughs> you know and i sure. My, the character of my voice is very lilting and it's kind of musical and he's one note all the time and he's yes. very serious and that I don't I'm not that guy <laughs> I'm more I think I'm a little more happy go lucky you know I'm a little more choji in real life I did, and, I did. Uh, yeah and, and he's just a little more whatever um and that's the thing like uh, I it's nice kind of that I have a catchphrase which is like whatever what a drag because that's kind of how I click into the voice so to like do the Shikamaru voice like, whatever what a drag and I can f I feel how that feels in the back of my throat and where the placement is and then once I'm in there I'm in there so it's it's kind of a little trick that voice actors do is find a word or a sentence that's going to remind you because when you think about it, you record something and then it might be a couple months before they bring you back. And they're like, okay, do that voice again. <laughs> yeah. What did I do that day? I don't remember, yeah. you know? But, and so yeah. you kind of need something to kind of help your, I've been doing it so long now, I don't, I don't really need that, but I still do it. I still like, you know, it's part of my process of just going, whatever, what a drag. So if I say that, then I'm in it. I can, I can basically find it right away, so. Instant transition. Well, another yeah. show that you are in, and that and this is obviously Boruto still going on, but you know, another yes. show that you also do, and it's you know, 
a little more recent, is uh, Kevin Aaron and the Iron Fortress. Yeah. So quick backstory on that show, you know, before we kind of get into that. So I'm in Hot Topic, Tom. I'm going through the shirts, you know, in the clearance aisle, because, you know, kind of a broke college kid. And I pick up this shirt, awesome design, and on it, it says, Cabin Air and the Iron Fortress. And I'm like, huh, this looks interesting. So one day, I just go, I tune it up, start the first episode, not really knowing what I'm expecting, and then all of a sudden, just explosions everywhere, action-packed, awesome characters, and, you know, it's horror. It. And yeah, I'm it's horror. It. And so, kind of, how'd you get into that show? Because, I mean... Shikamaru, you know, obviously can, you know, fend for himself and everything, but he's also very level-headed. And then you go into this show, which, you know, yeah. totally different. My character tough. in this one is like, if you don't get on the train, I'm leaving you behind, right? Like, he's, he's like cutthroat, selfish uh, engineer. He's an engineer on the train, which is the Iron Fortress. The Iron Fortress is the train uh, in the show. If you don't know, not to give anything away. And it's zombies, people. Yeah. It's horror and it's zombies. It's fantastic. It's like the only train still running and they're trying to defend from the train and save as many people as they can. And they get in these little towns trying to warn them and get them on board. And my character is totally like, you don't have time to be crying over your father. <laughs> you get on that train in 15 minutes or we're leaving without you. <laughs> you know, sure. people trying to bury their dead and I'm like, we're leaving. <laughs> you know, so. we're, we're in a dystopia. This, there's yeah. no time. So it's fun to play somebody that's a little like a rat, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. but he's good at his job and yet he still kind of cares. I, so he's an interesting character because I think he's more, he's a little more um, the way people kind of are. And I think a little bit this, the, the, uh, the COVID uh, pandemic has brought out a little bit more of like, there's a lot more of this kind of guy in the world than there are a lot of the, of, of, of the noble, you know. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm inclined to agree with you. But. Yeah. It's, so, but it's a fun show. So if you have not seen that show, uh, check it out. I think it's, I, I, I thought it's, we just recorded uh, three or four more episodes of it in December. So there was a, we did a bunch a couple of years ago and then they, did a few more now just recently. So hopefully those are up. I don't, again, you never know where you're going to find sure. anything or watch sure. where it goes or what, what happens once you record it. It just ends up in the world, you know, so. It kind of kind of winds up there, right? And it's a yeah. quick Google search away. Well, there was two more questions I wanted to ask you that I try to ask all of the guests that I have on here before we go into the plug zone and then viewers' comments and questions, which speaking of which, guys, if you haven't already, a lot of you have already messaged VisionCon, your guys' questions beforehand, but if you haven't already done that, go ahead and either do that or put them in the live chat because I'll be reading off some of your guys' questions and comments in that chat or the ones that you messaged on VisionCon for Tom Gibbs to answer at the end. But with that said, I did want to transition into my last two questions that I kind of ask all the guests I have on the show because a lot of people that watch this show, I've realized, are, yes, they're big fans of the people that we have on here, but they're also, plenty of them are also people that are either trying to get into voice acting or are yes. already in it, but are just trying to know how they make it big and become the next Tom Gibbous. So I wanted to ask you a few two questions that, you know, again, I try to ask all the guests I have on here. The first one is rejection. Now, rejection, obviously, it's, you know, a part of life in general. But I would argue in the entertainment industry, it is probably, you know, more prevalent in comparison, you know, to some other industries. So how do you kind of deal with, you know, rejection? Does it get any easier? Or if it doesn't, kind of just, how do you deal with it? Um... I mean, you just have to accept that rejection is really, you're going to get rejected more than you're going to get, get hired. Because just the nature of, you're going to audition for 500 things and you're going to get one, if you're lucky, right? So, I, I mean, I think there is some, somebody that put together a formula. It's like for every 50 auditions or something you get, I don't know. But the point is, you're, you're going to get rejected. Rejection is just part of the game. Actually, it's, it's not that you really get rejected. Um, you just never hear. So you, and the way it works now is um, I will get an email or I'll get, I'm on a couple of sites where they send me an audition. Um, they'll say, you know, audition for this thing. 
and I'll record my audition in my little home studio, which is good, but it's not fantastic. It's, it's pretty decent for, I'm using a Yeti mic and you know, it's fine for, for auditions. And I'll lay out my audition. I'll edit it, send it off to with, through an email to the person who had requested it. And then you just never hear. So, so you go, you just never hear. It's like, I don't know if it was good, if it was bad, if I was having a good day or a bad day or, you know, in the old days, they would bring you in and they would say, oh, you know what, this, this character is really more childlike. Can you play it goofy or can you do it, go a little more cartoony or whatever? Now you kind of, you read the script, whatever script they give you, the sides, they don't give you much, the description of the character. And then you go, here's my best shot. This is the, this is the way I would do it. This is what I think might be appropriate for this, not knowing any of the context of the show because you don't know what it is you're auditioning for. (laughs) And you just throw it out there and they'll just cast the person that they feel fits that thing more than anybody else. So you you just don't know. There's, you don't get a lot of notes anymore or anything because you're basically working kind of in isolation. This is way before COVID. This is, this has been going this way for a long time. Uh, The audition part of it. Um, Yeah. It's at least like, I want to say five or six years. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've gone into audition for anything for a lo- like a long time, a long time. So um, that's just kind of the way it is. Uh, so you're not really dealing with the rejection as much as you're, you're throwing stuff into the void and you, <laughs> every once in a while you go, oh, I got an email. <laughs> you would know, like me to come in and we're going to record something. It's like fantastic, you know? And, uh, and you're like, Maybe I didn't check my email yesterday. How long has that been sitting there? I should have responded <laughs> earlier, you know. Sure. So, uh, yeah, that's where it's very strange in that. So you can't really take it like um, get depressed over it or it's not even harsh, you know. <laughs> it's, sure. You might have more feelings about it if they actually called, up the, called you up and said, no. <laughs> they don't want you. You don't know what they're looking for. You don't know what they're doing. So. You know, you know, in college, they used to say uh, auditioning is your job. Your job isn't doing the job. Your job is to audition. And if you succeed at that, every once in a while, you'll get a job. Okay. I like that. <laughs> then, then you do a different job, which is yes. your research and your, you try and please the producer and the director. And you try and be, you know, uh, the best advice is when you do get a job, try and be easy to work with. Don't you know, don't go in there with an idea and then they say, no, we'd like it this way. And then no, I'm not going to do that. Or, you know, sure. have the ability to change and roll with the punches and, and, um, and you'll be fine and be, be, be affable, be nice, be on time, stuff like that. Those people work. The people that don't, they don't work as much because they're just like, ah, it's more trouble than it's worth. Yes. And, you know, think about it. Would you rather work with a, a buddy who comes in and it's fun to work with and is pleasant and is on time or would you, or that one friend that you have that never shows up. <laughs> you say, I need you here on Thursday. We're going to shoot this thing. And it's like, Oh dude, I, I forgot I had to work. Yes. Won't hear from them until I'm not even going to call you anymore. Exactly. You're just pain in the ass. Yeah. So. Well, which that actually transitions into my final question. So like I was saying, you know, a lot of people watch the show are interested in getting into voice acting or already are. So, Let's say I am the represent- I'm representing the physical embodiment of everybody watching at home that wants <laughs> to get into voice acting. Let's assume I have decided to take the leap. Where do I go from here, Tom Gibbs, to become, to become a successful voice actor and actor and maybe one day, one day maybe, become the next Tom Gibbs? What advice <laughs> would you give me? Uh, the nice thing about the times that we live in (laughs) is we do have a lot of uh, technology and it's accessible to a lot of people. Right. So right now you actually, you're doing it. You're putting on a show. You personally are doing it. You're putting on a show right now. You have people watching you. You've got a following, you have a great voice, a great presentational style. So you're kind of halfway there already, you know. Yeah. Uh, but let, let's assume because I mean, no, right? I'm, I'm for the greater people. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. There's little things you can do, uh, like to practice, to be good at it. Reading out loud. Most of voice, most of the voice work, like I said, you don't get the script ahead of time. You don't get to memorize the script. You know. So the quicker you can read a sentence, know what it means, and then do it in a way that makes sense, the better off you're going to be. 
So without no, any cold reading is what they call it in, in, um, in auditioning, okay. where they just hand you a script and they go, now do the best you can with it. And um, that's where improv helps a lot. So having a little bit of improv background helps you kind of just take it, make a decision and go. Don't second guess yourself, don't. And they'll give you adjustments or they won't, but <laughs> hopefully if they're working with you, they'll give you an adjustment and you can just continue on. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, there's a lot of websites out there. Some are better than others uh, where you can, they'll post jobs and you can try and audition for things. Uh, your best bet at this point, I'm, I'm going to recommend, do you know Steve Bloom? Uh, I'm sure your fans do. Steve is oh. Orochimaru. Oh, yes. Steve, Our Steve is a master voiceover guy. He's got the Guinness Book of World Records for video games. You know, he's Wolverine. He's, uh, he's and you know what? And he's also a really nice guy. He's got a class online. He's got a whole series, Bloombox, Bloombox, Bloombox Studios. I it's Bloom and I think Box. you can find it on Facebook. And I'm sure if you found Steve Bloom, you can get directed to that. So he does these online classes and they get into, they're on a variety of subjects and he gets into like, this is where we're going with the industry and stuff. You can take a few of those classes and you'll get an idea of like how you can kind of pursue it, what websites, are worth your time and what websites are like, uh, but you know what, even the, as long as you're not paying a ton of money for the websites, don't, don't get into ones where you have to pay a lot. Um, if, if it's practice, it's fantastic, mm -hmm. right? If they just post auditions and you're just throwing it out there, trying it and just, just to kind of get, a, get, a, get comfortable in front of the mic, get used to your voice, come up with different voice characters and, and, and that, um, I think, I think some of those are valuable just in the education, whether you book a job out of it or not, you know, um, so that the one I'm with is, I think it's called VOCAD, V-O-C-A-D, uh, you might have to look them up, and I remember they had to have me, I had to submit, uh, they're halfway between a real agency and, uh, um, you know, these online sure. things, they do send me stuff, but I had to audition or I had to send them my reel, and um and the reel is just a variety of different little voices cut together real quick uh the way i did my reel is like every it tells a story <laughs> right so yes. if, you, if you have one line and you want to show okay my excited teenager to be like you know come on everybody we can do this if we all stick together right tells you everything you need to know they're in trouble he's going to try and get them out that's the young hero okay moving on and then you just do another voice and you like tell a little story and cut them all together um and again you can uh like taking like steve's class there's other classes out there too um yuri and tara um uh, sasuke and um i'm gonna forget my own wife's name aren't i tamari <laughs> <laughs> they're actually married in real life and they have a book out there that's on the subject and that can be very helpful too because they have warm-ups and exercises and things you can do with your voice and how to get comfortable in front of a microphone and stuff i keep looking off here because i have my little my little oh, you're fine. <laughs> and so i'm like i want to talk into the mic i don't <laughs> the camera's here but the mic is right here so, <laughs> so i should just put it in front of me then i have to look at it um so uh uh, so anyway, they have a book uh, that's out. Steve Bloom's classes. I, 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 the people I know that have kind of done some of them uh, have gotten a lot out of it. So it's a really good place to start. And you know, the nice thing, because they're online, everything's done online. You, you don't have to leave Missouri. You don't have to leave Chicago or San Francisco or New York or wherever you are to pursue this thing. And actually, um, it's getting more and more where you could really work from anywhere, you know? And the technology, the internet stuff is getting so much better now uh, that you really can, the old days of where they bring you in and meet, you know, even like this is now sort of, it's becoming commonplace. But as far as the industry goes, this is kind of where it's all heading. So you can live anywhere you want and still try and pursue it, so. That's the good news. The bad news is there's a billion people out there trying to do the same thing. Sure. 
I mean, with easy access to it, you know, that's just, yeah. you know, it and makes everybody, the competition much bigger. Everybody who's ever done it has a different path. So if you ask the same question to Steve Bloom, he'll have a completely different story or to Quentin Flynn or, you know, all these different people, they'll all have different stories of how they did it and where they, where they got their little break or the show that sort of put them over the top. That was sort of accidental. You know, it's, it's in many ways, it's very random. And in other ways, it's like, you just keep hacking away at it and eventually hopefully something pushes through, you know? Yeah. So I got lucky and, you know, <laughs> trying to trying to turn it into more stuff. But I also have a real day job. I, I work for a production company and um, I kind of work a little behind the scenes uh, and that pays my bills. And, you know, this becomes my little side gig sure. and um, gets me to do things like this, which is a lot of fun. So. Of course, of course. Well, I always like asking that question. You kind of touched on why, because I forget which episode it was, but somebody asked me during the viewers comments and questions uh, segment to ask that to that guest. And I really liked how that guest and forgive me, I forget which one it was, uh, but answered that. And so every I decided to ask uh, those two questions with each guest moving forward. And I get a different answer each time. Yeah. So yeah, because there's a million paths. And it's always changing. The target is moving. And it's always changing how to get there, right? Yeah. So, I mean, who would have thought 10 years ago you could have uh, a following on Twitter or YouTube and become, you know, you, you, hear this, you see a reality show on television and it's like, here's this person. I'm like, who is that? I'll say to my wife, and it's like, oh, they, they've got a huge following on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> For what? You know, who are they? What do yeah. they do? Do they sing? Do they dance? No. They're just, they're a YouTube star or they're, I mean, that's a job now. So, and you can do it. That's yes. the beautiful thing about it is anybody can find that thing. And if you can hook, that's the trick, right? If you can find that thing, that's going to hook you in and hook people in to watch your YouTube channel and you get followers and man, you can make money. You can do the whole thing. So it's, it's a, it's a brave new world, right? You know, you know what, this time, uh, right now reminds me a lot if you watch like the silent movie era mm -hmm. people were coming out to California buying a camera and just started making movies you know the Buster Keatons and the Charlie Chaplins and the Laurel and Hardys and the you know the Keystone Cops and those guys were just out making movies all the time and they were cranking them out and put sell, you know like that's the kind of atmosphere I think it is it's like the wild west right now except it isn't located in one spot Los Angeles it's everywhere Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the beauty is anybody, you know, that's watching this or participating can, you, you could come up with an idea, you can figure out a way to market yourself and you could be the next big thing and, and, and the world will beat a path to your door, as they say, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's very well put. And also, uh, you know, unrelated, you know, if you're watching this later on YouTube, hey, maybe uh, hit that subscribe button. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm getting follow, follow me on Instagram. Man. Yeah. Which, on that note, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, if you have not already either sent your question or comment for Tom Gibbis in the, the messenger or on the live chat here on Facebook, do so now because... Tom just gave you guys a bunch of helpful tips on becoming the next Tom Gibbis. So I hope you wrote all those down <laughs> because now you guys have one final chance to ask any more comments and questions because ladies and gentlemen, we're in the plug zone. Tom right. Gibbis, now is your chance to advertise, promote, plug, oh whatever verb you want to use, anything <laughs> you want, websites, social medias, projects, the floor is yours. All right. Well, I will say um, I've got a lot of stuff going on. You know, I mean, I'm still doing Boruto. Uh, I'm glad that people are watching and enjoying. That's fantastic. I don't really have anything to plug per se, except I've just gotten into the world of Instagram. Yes, grandpa's got an Instagram account. <laughs> and, uh, and it is like that. Trust me. So if you... <laughs> <laughs> me trying to work it it's like mm, i don't know yes. so uh yeah i feel really old now but uh so uh tom gibbis the real the real tom gibbis uh at instagram it's not at instagram see that's that's how i said it wrong <laughs> how you're like, fine. you guys follow me on the interwebs <laughs> so uh it's instagram at the real tom gibbis 
that's the way you say it, correct? Yes. Um, so, yes. <laughs> and for people watching this later on YouTube, it's all going to be in the description below. Oh, the links, so don't worry, guys. So I've, uh, Miley Flanagan has been bugging me for a while. She's like, you need to get your fan base going. You need to get these, because they want to meet you. They, she, goes, she goes to conventions and stuff all the time. And she says, they ask me, you know, well, let's, you'll, they'll ask Shikamaro questions and stuff. And she's like, you've got to get out there and start doing this. And I just, so I'm finally kind of doing it. I've sort of resisted social media. <laughs> It has when everybody asks me to anybody asks me to do anything, I'm like, okay, sure. uh, you know, be it an interview or go to a convention or anything like that. If I can do it, I'll do it. But generally, I just kind of just live in my life, and then sure. something comes up, I don't really pursue it. And so Miley has really been on my case to start doing more, and um, happy to do it. So awesome. All right, well, those links will be in the description below on YouTube, guys, so make sure to check those out. Ladies and gentlemen, we're out of the plug zone. So we're going right <laughs> now, viewers' comments and questions. So I'm going to read off a couple that were sent in to the messenger real quick, guys, then I'll hit the live chat, so don't worry. Equal opportunity. So the first one is actually near and dear to my heart, and that comes from my actual real-life girlfriend, Raylene. Uh, she wanted wrote in and wanted to ask you, how does it feel to be the best character in Naruto? Oh. <laughs> well, it's a burden. <laughs> Being that I have to be the best character and the, the smartest person in the room. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's fun. It's, it is, he is a fun character to play because he is so smart and he has all the answers and he figures everything out. Uh, that heat on battle, when he was like five steps ahead of the guy, it's just, you know, when it happens, you're like, you know, you don't have a God. I'm your God now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, it was so great. Like, oh, it's so great. Yeah. So uh, I have really been blessed to get this character. I, it's been so much fun. And I never thought of him as being very much like me in the beginning. I thought, why am I playing this guy? I don't play this guy. I play the Choji guy, right? I'm the, I'm the, hey, let's go get something to eat, <laughs> you know, and funny. And, and uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I just love Shikamaru so much. I just think he's, he's been really great for me in my life. So, um, you know, I'm glad that people enjoy him as well. But. Of course. Well, uh, Tiffany uh, wrote in and wanted to know, you know, aside from your, day job and the kind of voice acting job, what are some hobbies that you have kind of outside of all of this? Hmm, well, I play video games. Uh, I'm not, not doing research. <laughs> <laughs> I just enjoy them, you know, I play, uh, uh, boy, I don't know. I mean, I have a dog, we uh, have a house. I gotta mow the grass and all the stuff that goes along with that. Um, we travel, my wife and I, we went to Italy last year. We like to do stuff like that. Uh, as you can probably tell, I, I eat a little too much. <laughs> we love food. Um, but yeah, that's, I, I don't know if I have like a hobby per se. Watch a lot of television, watch a lot of movies. Um, I feel like I'm pretty competent on my, and up to date on most of things that are sort of trendy and in, you know, Game of Thrones and stranger things and although those are even now considered old but uh it's <laughs> but a if, fast moving world if it's out there um we've got kind of a finger on the pulse and I, we like i like a wide variety of stuff too i like everything from downton abbey to like i said game of thrones or you know sure. avengers sure. movies you know stuff like that i love sure. it so love it all i'll pull one more out of the messenger before we go into the live chat uh oh okay this is a good one okay Seth wrote in and wanted to know, you know, and I kind of already touched on this a little bit, but Seth kind of sure. goes a little bit more in depth. So with your tips on, you know, being a voice actor, kind of when do you think is the right time to kind of splurge on equipment? Uh, Seth, Seth, you're watching right now. I I'm going to expand on that question. Uh, you know, equipment being, you know. Yeah, mics. Uh, computer and... software, mics, mm -hmm. or, you yeah. know, just stuff like that. There's, I would keep it simple in the beginning and then it's see if you get any little traction or anything, then you can start to upgrade little by little. Like I'm still using a Yeti mic. Uh, a Yeti is a fine, uh, if everybody knows, you know, 
you're familiar with the brand. Okay. They're like yeah. this tall. They're like hundred and seventy dollars, maybe. Might even might even be less than that. Um, it's not super expensive. It's a USB mic. I'm using a MacBook Pro. I keep it real simple for auditions and stuff. Just recently, I've started to kind of put together this little thing out in my shed, and I'm starting to build a little sound booth and stuff. But I wouldn't go crazy on it. I, but get something nice and simple. Start off start off relatively simple, and then kind of up as you get used to it and you start realizing what you want and what you want to do with it, then I would make your equipment better and better as you go. You know, I wouldn't dump a ton of money in the beginning. It's most, it's a waste of time really. If it's, if, if it sounds good to you, it's probably pretty good. If you find that it doesn't sound good and it's cracking and you're getting a lot of feedback and all that kind of stuff, you know, splurge for something a little nicer and then just bit by bit, piece by piece, start, building up your system until you, you know, uh, it affects your personal relationships in life. <laughs> and your wife says, why are you spending all your money on that? And what are you building in the shed? And, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> they have studios for these things. Why are you doing this? We're not paying that much for internet. Stop it. You know, that's. <laughs> I mean, that's a good way to put it though. And thank you for that question, Seth. All right. We got time for about one more question because we're running a little short on time. And Aaron, buddy, you know I got to end it off with you. Aaron wrote in and wanted to know, uh, because it's Disneyland's birthday this week, what's your favorite Disney memory? And what Digimon or Naruto character would you want to bring to hashtag hap happiest place on earth, either as Michael or Shikamaru? So to kind of break that question down, uh, if you were... <laughs> being either michael or shikamaru yes. which character from each of those shows would you want well, to shikamaru yeah. <laughs> you know, my... like, if you were shikamaru which character from naruto would you want to bring oh. you to disneyland well i'd bring choji if oh, shikamaru sure. was going to go and choji's his best friend yeah. might bring naruto if he needs a break but Mar naruto should spend more time with his children <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're leaving tomorrow at home what was that we're leaving tomorrow. Oh, yeah, tomorrow. I forgot. I have a wife and kids. <laughs> yeah, I should probably bring uh, Shikadai and Tamari. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Actually, she'd be good to bring along because she's got the big fan. She could just blow. You would, you know, anybody gets in within six feet, she could just. See, <laughs> that's why. That's why you're the brains. Nothing's going to be airborne yeah. around us, the the, uh, the Nara family for that's sure. Why you're the brains behind the operation? I did it. <laughs> All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 16 of Vision Con Live. Tom Gibbs, is there anything you want to close out on before we close things out? I just want to say thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I, I appreciate it. I, it makes me feel like a big shot to do these every once in a while. <laughs> and uh, so, I, you know, I'm glad that people still love the show and I'm honored to do it. And thank you so much for supporting and um, stay safe, everybody. Of course, make sure to follow Tom Give Us on Instagram. Link below in the description, guys, if you're watching this later on YouTube. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 16 of VisionCon Live. Make sure to tune in this Friday, July 17th at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time for my interview with Lori Allen, voice actress behind Pearl from SpongeBob, the boss from Metal Gear Solid series, and a plethora of other characters. But until next time, I am, of course, your host, Zach Wilson, but much more importantly, this has been my special guest, Tom Gibbous. You guys stay safe out there and always remember that life's better when you've got friends to share it with. <laughs>